five years and still talking, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. watching the debate tonight, but we're going to press on anyway, and uh, as we always do, at least once every couple of weeks, we go out to Las Vegas. It goes something like this. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's that time of the week when we, or every couple of weeks, when we call out to Las Vegas, and let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can get them to answer here. Uh, there we go. Are we on? Yeah. An Arab guy is crawling through the desert. He's going, water, water, I need water. He comes across a little old Jewish guy sitting at a table selling neckties. Little old Jewish guy goes, you want to buy a necktie? Only $10,000 each. The Arab goes, what are you, crazy? I don't need a necktie, you idiot. I need water, water. The little old Jewish guy at the table says, no problem. Just call 20 miles my way. My brother has a restaurant. You get all the water you want. So the Arab crawls away in that direction, going, water, water. Hours and hours later, the Arab comes crawling back towards the old Jewish guy, going, water, water, water. The little old Jewish guy at the table says, what's the matter? Didn't you find my brother's restaurant? The Arab guy goes, yes, but he wouldn't let me in without a tie. Thank you. Thank you very much. I like that one. Why don't you just change your name to Shecky Pearl? That's right. I wanted to do Leonard Barr. <laughs> or Myron Pearl. That would be a good one because that's the kind Myron of Myron Pearl. Yes, that's right. That's right. It's a trippy to the great Myron Cohn. Yeah, because that's the kind of joke Myron Cohn would have told. I love that. Yeah. I love those jokes. Guy comes into work every day, 20 years, 9 o'clock shop, never late. One day after 20 years, he comes in at 10 o'clock. The boss goes, you're an hour late. The guy is an hour late. I went to take the elevator. I fell down 17 floors. The elevator wasn't there. I went to the hospital. I broke everything in my body. The boss says, that took an hour. That took an hour? That <laughs> 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 oh. one had a delayed reaction, but I like that one. Okay, give me oh, some... the old jokes. Quick. The old stories. Quick, give me another joke. Quick. Another one? Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. Guy goes on to an elevator. She's a naked 84 year old. old it is a naked 84 year old woman. He goes, My wife has an outfit just like this. <laughs> Little old Jewish guy gets hit by a truck. He's laying in the street. He, they cover him up. The ambulance is coming. The cop goes, Sir, are you comfortable? He goes, I make a good living. You know, that was the one I was just going to tell. <laughs> I love that one. That's, you know, I, that's the classic. I'll, I'll tell you, you know what it is about me, which is really strange? I have a hard time telling jokes uh, uh -huh. because I can't remember them. You know, like uh -huh. I, you just told me a couple of good jokes, and I'll remember those if I see somebody on the street today and he says, tell me a joke, I'll tell you what you just mm -hmm. told me. But if tomorrow I'm asked the same question, uh -huh. nothing. I uh, yeah, I, 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 well, I've never considered myself a good storyteller. That's why I love comedians who are great storytellers. There's not too many of them left around, but the, oh, man, you can tell a good story. I admire the hell out of them. Myron Cohn like was Bill that Cosby, way. once upon yeah. a time. <laughs> you know, well, uh, Myron Cohn, okay, was very good at that. He, oh, I mean, he's great. I, the best. I was not a big fan of Myron Cohn's, but I was a big fan of what he did. You know? Uh-huh. Which was uh, uh, um, um, kind of amazing. Which was his whole ability at storytelling, and supposedly, story supposedly he had been a door-to-door -door salesman, or he'd been a traveling salesman. Yeah. And so uh -huh. he always had to have these stories to tell people to make himself uh -huh. get endeared to the people that he was uh, talking exactly. to. Exactly. You know. <laughs> and he got so good at it, he threw the samples away and ran on stage. Oh yeah. He was a professional storyteller. Yeah. Yeah, he was. He I'm was talking very he, Jewish today. He was actually one of a kind. Uh, there weren't many people who no, did yeah. this kind of act. You no, know. he followed the Beatles on Ed Sullivan the weekend they did it in Miami, the second appearance on the Ed Sullivan show, and he killed. Oh, oh really? 
That was the hard, that the was Beatles the, did three three weeks in a row, one in New York, one in Miami, the third one in New York, and Myron Cohen followed them in Miami on the Ed Sullivan Show. Who who did I hear followed the Beatles on their first appearance? The and, first appearance was Frank Gorshin. The third appearance was Alan and Rossi, and I think they all did very well. Really? You know yeah, why? Frank okay. Gorshin killed. Okay, I, you, see, I you, saw the scene not that not that long ago. The clip. You know why? They, you know why, You know why they did well? Because. They just ignored the screams and went on with their act. No, nope, that wasn't it at all. If they, you go back and watch, they those, paid off the audience. I don't know. If why. you go back and watch those shows, you'll suddenly realize that there were two different audiences. That what they did with the Beatles is they pre-recorded them with all the kids screaming and all the kids in the studio, and they got uh -huh. rid of the kids and they brought in their normal Ed Sullivan audience, uh -huh. and they did the show live and then inserted the Beatles segments. So, so if you were at that show that night, you didn't get to see the Beatles, or you saw them you, at a separate you di time? You didn't see the Beatles. You saw the recording. Oh, that's a ripoff. <laughs> uh, well, no, but, uh, it, that was the show. We saw Tati O'Shea. No, Fuck you, Sullivan. It, it was very smart of the Sullivan people, because they realized yeah. that if they had that screaming audience in there, they wouldn't listen yeah. to anybody else. You know. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, but that, there was Alan and Rossi. Uh, I think uh, Marty Allen's wacky hairstyle. I'm Ringo's mother, and the audience screamed. So some of the kids must have been left over. I don't know, but what I hear is that that portion, those portions were pre-recorded. For, oh, yeah, yeah. for that very reason. Well, well, because they, well, that's a rip-off right here. Can, can you imagine them trying to do the Ed Sullivan show with a bunch of those screaming teenagers in the audience? I know, yeah, yeah, who comedians fuck. <laughs> <laughs> You're like playing South Carolina, being safe. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Now, I don't know if they did that on the future uh, uh Appearances of the Beatles, but they did at that time. Yeah, yeah. on yeah. the first one. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, how about that? You learn some every day. Uh, I wouldn't want to follow the Beatles. You know, I would do it just to see what would happen. <laughs> I don't think he'd get killed or anything, but uh, you know, I've had worse audiences. Also, the smart thing that Sullivan did, if you watch that show, is what's the first act on the show? Uh, I don't know. The Beatles. Oh, oh, that's us. They were the first and the last. So yeah, you have to, exactly. you know, I have to watch the whole show. Exactly. He put them on. He said, the Beatles will be back later on in the show. And yeah, then, you have to watch the whole thing. Then you had to watch an hour of acrobats and plate uh, That's right. Yeah, you couldn't and, turn on to Disney because the Beatles might come on later. That's correct. So very, very, Disney. <laughs> very smart, judicious programming on his part. Yep. You know. Well, I'm there, there, but I knew what the fuck I was doing. Yeah. The whole yeah. thing was calculated right here. Yeah, yeah. That was an amazing show, actually, if you think about it. Oh, it was great. You don't get too many of those variety shows anymore. You know what you do? You know the closest thing to a variety show right now? Amer what? America's Got Talent. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's what, they got a little of everything on that. That's yeah. why they got judges oh, and everything. They have a lot of a little bit of everything, you know. Yeah, that's true. That's true. And, you know, you, back, could, so. you could have a plate spinner come out, followed by a singer, followed by, you know, uh -huh. uh, sure. whatever. Uh, and, yeah, and exactly. What, what he's created with that show uh, is is really the ultimate um, uh, kind of vaudeville show, very uh -huh, similar sure. to what, what Sullivan was doing, but just yeah. you know in a competition format. Exactly. Yeah, you got dancers and acrobats, and you don't have plate spinners anymore. I always wonder where the plate spinners went. Uh, I don't know. Here's the trouble. You know, uh, if, if Sullivan <laughs> did kill something. He killed vaudeville. And how he uh, killed vaudeville is these guys would take their act. They, you know, maybe they did 15 minutes of plate spinning or five minutes of plate spinning. And they uh, would go everywhere <laughs> in the country doing the same exact act every single time. And they yep. knew, and these acts would always kill because they knew exactly how to make them kill every single time. Yep, sure. <laughs> Now, you gotta, here's the problem. You start, out, you start out with paper plates, then you work your way up to the china plates. Here's the problem. All of a sudden, you realize, okay, that um, um, you've, you've done your act all these years. Now you're going to do Ed Sullivan. And what took you uh -huh. years of going around the country from city to city to city to city, you got to all those people in five minutes. Yep. And now they've all seen your act, and you can't go out yeah, there and true, do the yeah. same and act anymore. Do. And that's what new material that, Television killed vaudeville. Yeah. Yep. I mean, when I was a kid, uh, my father used to play shows at like the Warfield Theater in San Francisco, 
And, uh, you know, you'd have all these different acts on the show. Maybe they'd end up with a big act like Lena Horne, because I remember yeah. I remember Lena Horne because my father was playing for Lena Horne at the, at the war field, and uh, he kept telling me every night how much he was in love with Lena Horne. What a beautiful, absolutely <laughs> gorgeous woman gorgeous she was, lady. which she was. So yeah. uh, now I have to meet my father after the show at the Warfield Theater, after one of the shows. They did six shows a day, okay? Uh, hey, yeah, a lot of shows. And, and so I'm standing at the stage door, and uh, my father comes out, and immediately following him is Lena Horn. <coughs> Whoa. And I run, up, to I, I run up to her, and I say, Ms. Horn? And she goes, yes. And I go, my father's in love with you. <laughs> no, oh, no. <laughs> and my father's sitting there ready to hit me. And she thought that oh, was my God. But she thought I was precocious and wonderful. So. Oh, that's good. That so. was the one time I met Lena Horn. Uh, and she and your father started a torrid, steamy affair that yeah. lasted for three years. That's right. Uh, and <laughs> <laughs> she was she, Her story was an amazing story. I mean, you know. I don't know her story, but she was well, an amazing I mean, woman. I mean, her story was she was a w black woman working in a very white world. And um, yep. she had to deal with that. Uh, but yep. she dealt with it, you know, and she made it work for her. And she was yep. uh, she was amazing. But she never, they, she never became the star she would have been if she was white. Okay. Uh, yeah, sure. Because, you know, at MGM, it was always, you know, so-and-so with Lena Horn. Yeah, exactly. Don't know why, why there's no sun up in the sky, stormy weather. Good, there's Lena Horn. Now let's get on with yeah, the best, rest of this white picture, you know. Yeah, now let's get Doris May, the, people, the one that people want to see. And if she did uh, do a, a, a movie in which uh, she was, it was an all-black cast, there were very few of those. I mean, Green Pastures yeah, was about many. it. Cabin in the Sky. That's right. Um, yeah, the guy, Rent, Par Rent Party was good. I don't know if you saw that one. Rent Party? <laughs> Rent Party, 1947. Oh, yeah, it's like a, about 30 minutes long. We're going to have a Rent Party. Rent Party, woo. No, but that is she was. But it's she, Rent Party. She wasn't in Rent Party. No, she wasn't in Rent Party. She, she wore, uh, you know. <laughs> But she, I think she got very frustrated with show business. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, she just wanted to perform. And, and the reason yeah. why she was also acceptable as a star at MGM was because she kind of looked white. She didn't have a threatening black look. Yeah, yeah. They, she, what they called a high yellow back then. She, you know, like, it, let's say, the white let's say for just, dark and let's say for grins that Hattie McDaniel, the first woman ever to win an Academy, black woman to win an Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress in Gone with the Wind. Yeah. Hattie McDaniel had maybe had a gorgeous voice. You never would yeah. have known it because she wasn't going to be, you know, it took a Lena Horne who looked that good and that yeah, acceptable sure. to a white audience, you know. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, you know, she was true to her blackness throughout her entire life. So she, you know. Oh, she had class, man. She, she had, had class real, all till the end. She real, was wonderful. Real class. So, you know, that, that was Lena Horne. Now everybody's going, who the fuck was Lena Horne? Well, go fucking yeah. watch your <laughs> movies, you assholes. Yeah, go see, uh, go listen to some records, you motherfuckers. Learn about the real shit. You know who I saw the other day in a movie? I'm watching uh, a movie and... Um, it was on Turner Classic Movies, and I'm trying to remember which movie. Oh, it was Showboat, the original. Gosh, I remember that one, the, yeah, sure. No, not the color one, the black and white one. Oh, with, no, I never saw the black with, and white one. With Paul Robeson singing Old Man River, which is just, if you've yeah. never seen it, his his performance of that song was just breathtaking, okay? Yep. But anyway... Uh, when the showboat is coming to town, there are all these faces of black people going, "Oh, show, you know, showboat's coming to town." You know, they're doing yeah. there. And and one of the guys, I went, that, "That's that's Rochester." Oh, he was yeah. That's, that's, the showboat, Bob. that's Eddie Anderson. And I went, I looked it up, and sure enough, it was Eddie Anderson. It said, you know, yep. uh, black showboat looker at her. I don't know what the <laughs> yeah, Negro number seven. It was like one of his first movies that he made. Yeah, uh, so probably, I don't know, was that before Jack Benny or? Well, before, he did. Uh, I think was a Cabin in the Sky that he did. 
uh-huh. uh, in which you know he dies or something, and and uh, oh, what's her name? I'm trying to remember the actress now. The bl- the black singer, the other really great black singer. Well, there goes my mind. Uh, but she uh, she Earth a kid. Yeah, Earth a kid. she, she then one. tries pleads to the devil to bring him back because he won't gamble uh-huh. anymore or whatever. And so he had a he had a career before Benny. But oh, when I Jack Benny came along, um, in fact, he was known as Eddie Anderson, and the Rochester, Eddie Rochester Anderson came in when he went to Benny and played Rochester. Yeah. Ah. Which was... I did not know that. If you think about it, comedically, one of the best created characters ever in radio. Uh-huh. And he played it superbly. And the reason was... Oh. Yes, what what was Rochester's job to Jack Benny? Uh, he's the houseboy, the driver, whatever. The, yeah, he was the, the but, uh, he was the butler, right? Now, normally, butler, yeah. normally when they would play that, you'd have like Step and Fetch it or Willie Best doing their shuffle uh-huh. and going, uh, "I'm going as fast as I can, boss." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what they did was with him. Is well, Benny, Rochester was always outsmarting Jack Benny. J- and Rochester was always smarter than Benny. Yep. He was yep. always kind of <laughs> looking at him like, look at this fucking white guy. You know? Yep. And that's I'm going to sit here wearing his clothes and see what he does about it. That's what made it so fucking great. And that's what oh, made yeah, him so great. Absolutely brilliant. Jack was the victim all the time. Well, uh, well, Jack, you know, oh, yeah. everybody has this wrong. Jack Benny wasn't a comedian. Uh, because comedians, uh, there's a diff- He was a clown. Yeah, he, here, that's true. and here's the diff- like here's the difference in distinction. Do you know the difference in the distinction between a clown and a comedian? Uh, a lot of people aren't scared of comedians. <laughs> I'm not. When I say clown, there are nightmares about comedians. When, Those accounts when, late, when I say clown, I'm not talking about guys with white face and red lips, you know, and things like that. Yeah, I'm, I know. I'm talking <laughs> about there's a clown and there's a comedian. A comedian. Yeah. Pulls jokes on people. Mm. A clown has jokes pulled on him. Aha, uh-huh, that's right. And everything on the Benny show was at Benny's expense. Yeah, and that's all, true. All the jo- <laughs> everything, the joke was always on him. And the joke he was, was the victim. Al- the joke was always at his expense. And yep. um, I mean, I remember just some superb writing, and my favorite. I always mention this. My favorite was one Benny show where it's uh, every Jack Benny show was um, here's Jack Benny and he's going to the grocery store. The whole show is going yeah. to the grocery store, right? Yeah. Or he's going to the train station and he's going mm-hmm. to the train station. And this one was going to the grocery store and he goes to the grocery store and he's shopping and this kid comes up to him. Tell me this isn't perfect writing. And the kid says to him, are you Jack Benny? And he goes, why, yes, son, I am. And he says, uh, she, the kid says, you know, Mr. Benny, I play the violin. And, the, and Benny says, do you play as good as I do? And the kid looks at him and says, I used to. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Are you as good as me? I used to be. <laughs> There's another one <clears throat> from radio because he had that alleged feud with Fred Allen. And there's a line where Fred Allen goes, Jack, you couldn't improvise a belch after eating a bean burrito. And Jack goes, you wouldn't say that if my writers were here. <laughs> <laughs> I think I like that one better than I'm thinking it over. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, if people, if they don't know that joke, I mean, Benny's walking down the street at, late at night, mm-hmm. and he gets accosted by a, 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 a robber uh, who sticks a gun in his back or whatever. And it played by Sheldon Leonard, by the way, in case you remember oh, yeah. who Sheldon Leonard was. Sure. And he goes, your money or your, he says, your money or your life. And there's dead silence. This, that, by the way, this, this joke got the biggest laugh in the history of radio. Yeah. Kick ass joke, bro. And he, you know, he says, he says, did you hear me? I said, your money or your life. And they're still quiet. And he says, I'm telling you one more time, buddy. Your money or your life? And Benny says, I'm thinking it over. <laughs> and uh, and because of Benny's timing, he just timed it oh, perfectly. Sure. I mean, he had 
split-second timing. I mean, he knew the milli- uh, millisecond. Yep, oh, it was amazing. In, in order to pause. I mean, he was just amazing. Yep. But that, that joke got uh, 45 seconds of laugh on the radio. Wow. <laughs> they, they had to cut stuff out of the script so they could get off the air on time. Wow. Oh, man, that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Great joke. Yeah. Big ass joke. Jack had the best writers. Yep, had, had great writers. He was my favorite comedian uh, of all time. I oh, mean, my I, favorite, too. Yeah. If anyone has, there's so many good ones. I says, who's your all time favorite? I have to say Jack Benny. Well, there are two. I still there, watch the reruns at night. He still makes me laugh. There are two people I tell, I always told comedians, if you want to watch how to do your trade, okay, there are two people to watch. One is Jack Benny, obviously. Yep. Um, but you'll never be a Benny, but you'll learn something about timing. You'll learn oh, something sure. about, about you know, uh, uh, playing a character if that's what you do on stage, you know. Yep. And, 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 and knowing that character well enough to have material written for that character that works. I said the other one was Bob Hope. Oh, yeah. And I said, not that yeah. Bob Hope was a great comedian. But he was the best comedian on stage when it came to something. And this is something you can appreciate yeah. because you know what I'm talking about. There's a thing yeah. when comics are doing comedy that's called authority. Yep. In other words, you're planting your feet on that stage. And now you're telling yep. jokes. And basically you're saying to the audience, I'm going to be funny and you're going to laugh. That's what authority yeah. is. And Bob Hope yep. had that. Bob Hope had some yep. of the, if you just listen to his material, some of the worst written jokes in the history of radio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it was that authority that sold yep. the jokes. You know. He commanded the stage. Yeah. Uh, and he would, he would stand there, and even if the joke didn't go over, he would then look at the audience and say, you can laugh now. Yeah. <laughs> you know. He was prepared. Yeah. I mean, he was amazing. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, Richard Sheckman, Shecky and I, we're traveling across the country, and he had a whole bunch of tapes of old radio shows, and we put on a Benny radio show. And the jokes were terrible. They were yeah. just horrible. But people were laughing hysterically, but we couldn't see ben, uh, see Hope, so we couldn't see that authority yeah. was selling uh-huh. the joke. You know, but we were uh-huh. amazed at how bad his writers were. He didn't have great writers. The best writers no. ever were Benny's writers. Benny had the Benny's best writers. Benny's writers were the best, yeah. yeah. Benny had the best ones. Like Frank Sinatra had the best material. Yeah. Jack Benny had the best comedy material. B- Balzer, Goldman, I'm trying to remember their names. I, ha- I used to know them. It was like it were like four of them. They uh, wrote for him for years, uh, for years, they, and they knew precisely how to write for that character. Yeah. Okay, you know. okay uh, here's another episode. You go down to your vault, you know, in, yep. uh, your money vault, and it, it takes forever, <laughs> you know. It's mostly sound effects of walking, unlocking doors. Yep. Yeah. Echoey footsteps and stuff. I think, oh, be careful. There's the moat. Those alligators are hungry. I, I think there's something else, too, about Benny. He, he and his writers knew how to use radio. Uh, yeah. When they went to television, it was a little more of a, of a task because now uh-huh. you had to put vision to what before had just been, you know, you could, um, radio was the, I say, the greatest visual medium that was ever invented in sure. those days. Because you would listen to a mystery, you would listen to Benny or whatever, and he's going down to his yeah. vault and there's his walking and unlocking keys and so on. And your mind created the scene. Their yeah, sound... Sure. Implanted it in your brain. It was, it was you exactly know, you used your imagination. You didn't have to see a particular picture that they wanted to show you. And when I did radio, you, the sound, doing, you made it up. I don't know if you ever noticed this, but when I wound up doing radio in San Francisco, I mean, among other things, I used that. I used the fact that it was a visual medium, sure. and that I could yeah. do things like I. I used to have uh, magicians on radio. Uh, and people were going, people, would, Lucas <laughs> yeah, people would say to me, "Wow, that was a terrific show! You ran that, you did that, had that guy do his magic act, and I thought I could see it." You know, wow, uh, and and so I, uh, yeah, yeah. Well, hey, listen, you know what? 
uh, we have gone through, we've just whipped through 25 minutes. We here. just ate up those minutes. We just snorted those seconds. Yeah, just ate up those minutes. Uh, originally, I tried <laughs> calling you, and your phone wasn't, It was. I was just going to voicemail. I don't know what the problem was. My, my girlfriend, Nina, said uh, the same. She couldn't get through to me, either, so I had to have this thing looked at. So. Yeah. Oh, boy. Well, you, might have, you might have had something turned on or turned off or you know, it's uh, that, yeah, uh, rang, rang the last couple of times. It, it's, that te- it. it's that technology, t- technology shit. It's that all these newfangled electronic devices. God damn it, the typewriter will never catch up. Anyway, I'm I'll sticking say, to the quill. I'll say it like I always say it, ladies and gentlemen. That's Stephen Pearl. We'll see you in a couple of weeks, Stephen. You got it, my friend. It's always good to talk to you, and we'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Mm. I'm not wearing a shirt over this tonight. It looks pretty nice, actually. Uh, For those of you who are are watching us, for those of you who aren't, why aren't you watching us? You can go over to GabNet.net. You can go over to YouTube and look us up. You can uh, go to my... Well, no, you can't go to the Facebook page and get it. Okay. Anyway, let me see here. Let me turn on the uh, Skype. Hama, 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 hama. Here we go. And, uh, yeah, turn on Skype uh, so that people can call the program, and we'll see what we can do about uh, getting people to talk with us. I know that right now there is a debate going on uh, a, a rather useless exercise in American democracy uh, that was invented for the sake of being able to run commercials. You know, it really bothers me, and I don't know if it bothers you, but uh, th- they're running commercials, maybe only one commercial break an hour that lasts about five minutes, but they're running commercials in this debate. And I think we should make laws about that these kind of things. That when there are debates, you can't run commercials. There's just something terribly wrong with that. Okay? So, what the hell? Anyway, our lines are open right now, and I'm just waiting for the first person to call. Who will be the first person to call tonight, do you figure? Yeah? Hmm? I'm saying, I'm saying tonight it'll be Phil. Okay? But I may be wrong, but I think you're wonderful. i yeah, have some coffee here. Hmm? Mm. I keep imagining that I have uh, physical problems. Uh, well, here we go. What do you know? It's 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 Charlie's the first caller up. Let's see here. And he, by the way, is uh, already has a seated place on our uh, on our uh, exactly thing. Young. Wait a minute. Pretty good acting Wait. career. Wait. Too. Hold on a second. Yeah. What, what is that? What, where is that coming from? What the hell is that? And he's where, where are we getting that uh, that, that from? I'm, tr- I'm trying to hold on a second, folks. I got to figure out where where audio is coming from. Huh? Well, let me see. I have no idea. Where is that audio coming from? I can see it when I go there. Yeah. Now you can get wait. online, right? From your oh, wait a minute. You see, that's like right? an old. I can I can get online. I can. How did that happen? That's strange. That's an old interview with uh, uh, um, our good friend uh, Bubbles that somehow is playing itself. Anyway, let me put uh, Charlie up here. Uh, Let me see here so that he's on. Okay, and we do a little transition, and we should have have Charlie there. And, oh, uh, uh, guess what? Uh, We have to... We have to find a place here for, uh, let's see, we'll put him in the number one spot. Uh, this is our good friend, Bree, uh, who is still I in. I was calling earlier, but it didn't get through. I wanted to be first. Oh, well. Oh, well, I probably didn't. Uh, I, I probably didn't have the line on or something like that. You know, that's always All possible. Right. Well, I did it right when you said so. Oh, really? Huh. <coughs> yeah. Son of a bitch. Phil Myers says, can't get through. Call me back. What? It, it, Phil can't get through? Hold on a second. Let me see if I can call. Yeah, mine was ringing for a long time. Oh, are they? Uh, is it having problems tonight? Uh, let me Maybe. see here. Let me see here. Let me see here. Let me get uh, put a Phil. Phil Meyer. Okay. 
There we go. Here's Phil ad. Okay, it's calling Phil Meyer. Uh, I have no idea what this is. What this little I thing was is watching about. the debate. Um, wait, wait, hold on a second. Hold, hold on a second, because I've got Phil. Phil, you there? Yeah. 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 What and happened? They kept saying call declined. Call declined. Yeah. Mm. Three times. Did anybody get that? Any of the other guys get that? No. No. Hmm. No, just ringing a long, long time. Wow. Wow. Hmm. Hmm, I wonder. I got right through. <laughs> is anybody else trying to call? Would you would you please send me a little note or something through? Let's see here. How'd you send me? Through my Facebook page. If you can't get on. Yeah. Yeah. Messenger. Uh, and you want me to call you back? Go to the uh, uh, Facebook Messenger, and we'll call you back. What the hell? You know, I I don't understand it. But you know, that's that's the good gods of Skype. Um. Let me see if all my uh, of all my stuff is uh, is working correctly here. Uh, let me see here. Uh, go there. Go there for settings. Uh, and uh, yeah, it it, uh, it looks like everything's okay. Audio, video, calling. Uh, let's see. Call. Call. Only allow Skype. Uh, calls from contacts to ring on this, this device. Riveting. No, I had it off. What did you say, uh, Bree? This is riveting, Alex. Yeah, well, I'm trying to. <laughs> I, I'm glad I called in early. Uh, well, I'm trying to <laughs> really jump on the topic. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what the problem is. I'm sorry. Wait till we start talking about the debate. You know, I mean, uh, is anybody else going to call me so I can see if this is working tonight? Well, what what happened, Alex, was. I got into the office bright and early this morning. There are a couple of reasons for that. Mm -hmm. But then when I tuned into Gat, I tuned into Gatnet on my Mac, and I tuned into the the debates on my iPad. Mm -hmm. When I st I started to hear the jokes of Stephen Pearl, and I said, I've heard those. I think this is a repeat. And then I thought, oh, the whole show tonight's a repeat because of the debates. No. Uh -huh. So I put that on mute, watched the debates until you came back on. Then I clicked and said, oh, he's live. That it, well, that isn't the whole show is in a repeat. Then yeah. I came on. Oh, so here, some here, people might here think that. Here comes Jeff Stein. Uh, let me see here. Uh, hello, Jeff. Are you there? There he is. Yeah, I am. Did you have any trouble getting in? No. No, he, never, he didn't have any trouble getting in. I guess, I guess the people at Skype finally decided they don't like Phil. Yeah, um, I figure you blocked me. <laughs> let me see here, Stein Zeller. Okay, there we go. And then I go transition. And there's uh, there's Jeff as well. Um, I as opposed to what I was saying, I did watch some of the uh, some of the debate, which is going to be over soon. Although we have a lot of people watching us right now, which makes me believe that not a lot of people do care about it. You know? Or they want to hear about it from us. Well, you know, I mean, uh, if we have a normal amount of people, if not a, a little bit more than would be listening at, at this time, mm -hmm. which means they're not watching the debate. They could be Maybe they're watching the debate like and they're listening to us. Because That's if you I'm watch doing. the debate, mm -hmm. they were all saying the same thing. They were just no. trying to get their two, two minutes in the sand. Yeah. Well, they definitely were not saying the same things. Well, yeah. I, uh, I, I, I disagree with you, Bria. I think that on the, the basis of it all, they were trying to be crowd pleasers to the liberal audience. Yes. Rather yes, than... Uh, well, and, uh, you know, the, the, my favorite part mm -hmm. was the fact that they had a glitch, a technology glitch, when they were going from Lester Holt to uh, uh, the other, uh, the, the last two uh, What was the uh, technical glitch? Questions. Uh, the, the lights weren't turned off on the uh, other crew, and uh, they had to stop the debate until they fixed it. So it was kind of like Gabnet. Well, also and, uh, on MSNBC, uh, at least while Beto O'Rourke was talking, they started getting really bad reception. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. and I went over to Channel 4 so I could watch it on NBC, and it was fine there. So somehow yeah. MSNBC has lousy equipment. I watched yeah. it on NBC, and uh, did you notice that uh, when Beto O'Rourke was talking, they weren't showing his hands, uh, so, you know, he wasn't waving them around. The, he, maybe he stopped doing that. 
I don't. I have no idea. I don't. I don't follow these a lot of these people. I did yeah. feel that as I watched it, um, uh, De Blasio made a very good showing. I thought the bald guy from Maryland uh, can I, was. Can I finish good. what I'm saying, yeah. Phil? Please. Paul was butting in, never keeping to his time. We don't care. Oh, no, no. Inslee was the butting in guy. We don't care what you think because you're a Republican and you're not going to like any of them. So shut the fuck up. Well, I thought the the one guy, the bald guy, all the way on the right uh, from Maryland, uh, was uh, reasonable. Uh, he had reasonable points. He felt that. Did yes, you hear Medicare, me what I said, Phil? We don't give a shit what you think. Oh well, then I'll go back to watching and. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you guys I mean, can a lot of it. You don't even need the audio. You can just. It's it's all about you know on television. It's just image, cadence. Yeah. Well, and I felt feel I felt you. the two people who were who were doing very well tonight, oddly enough, was de Blasio, who uh, I, I was surprisingly good. Okay. And, Except he was uh, lying. What? Uh, he was, he was talking see, I don't about care how, what you yeah, fucking yeah. think, Phil. Yeah, how he don't was you understand? dealing with the we police. Don't care. The we police don't, hate him. We don't care what you think. Oh, Okay. Yeah. I love <laughs> you know, we don't. You're a, you're a Republican. We don't care what you think. All right. I'm an independent. Yeah. We now we care what the independent thinks. You know. I like Tulsi. No, I would just like to be able to say what I have to say about this, and then Phil, you can jump in and say what you have to say. And Alex, your guy Pete Buttigieg, gone. He's gone. What do you mean? I don't think he's gone. Oh, he's out of it? No, he's you not. You didn't see his town hall? I saw his town hall. He looked about this big. No, he didn't. I disagree uh, with you. I disagree the, with you. He I came think, a, when I saw that, I oh, said, now, Phil, I, look I'm at what not Phil does. This guy. I don't want him as our commander. Phil, Phil now gets pissy and leaves the room. <laughs> you know. No, I disagree with you. I think uh, 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 he did much better. He did quite well Alex. there. He stood up for himself. Hold on a second. He stood up for himself, but he seemed very concerned. And if you saw the interviews with him after it, uh, he was very emotionally uh, wrenched by the situation. Uh, and uh, I think he handled it well. I think the reason... Oh, Jesus, Phil. What are you, what are you doing that for, Phil? What, what are you, What's that for? <laughs> And I'm going on pause. Huh? Wait a minute. Why are you going on pause, Bree? Because we're talking about the we have huge issues to to talk about. But yeah. I, if I don't know, if we just want to do fun stuff, that's cool. No, we're not uh, doing got, fun stuff. Uh, but I, I'm I'm not doing fun Forget stuff. It. It's Phil we who's to trying to do the, the little. Debates. No, we're talking we're about him. We're talking about. There's it. a new vegan burger that's going around. I, I tasted it. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> While the world burns and nobody cares, Trump's getting reelected anyway because the machines aren't going to be fixed. So that's yeah. it. I won't say anything more about the Democratic candidates or debates or anything because no. All I'm win. saying, all I, 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 all I was doing was I was disagreeing with Trump you uh, about I, I, I was disagreeing with you about Buttigieg because I've seen. I saw a lot of the stuff that was going on there in South Bend, and I thought he was doing, he was making the best of a really bad situation. And I thought he was genuinely cared about the situation. On the other hand, he didn't like to be assailed by people for not caring because he does, okay? He stood up for himself. I thought that was a good move. I think where his big mistake is, is he would make more points by not going to the debate tomorrow night Staying in South Bend, saying I have to take care of this situation, and I think that would get him more points uh, because he isn't going to get anywhere in that debate. Nobody's going to get anywhere in these debates. Look at him; it's like a clusterfuck, you know. So, Charlie, what do you think? I guess you're the only one talking to me now. Well, I'll talk. <laughs> No, I, uh, I I tried to watch the debate, but I couldn't take the, 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 the moderators. I, I, I had to turn it off. <laughs> what was wrong with the moderators, in your opinion? Well, they kept giving all this BS about, you know, oh, look, 
they're gonna attack Elizabeth Warren and they're gonna everybody's gonna jump on her and all I, they were trying to create some kind of controversy before well, the debate even started. What I didn't like about the debates and what I don't like about the way they're handling it is they're handling it like it's a um, it's a reality show. It's like a reality uh, contest, like America's Got Talent. Yeah. And and they're all, and, or a football game. They're all sitting around before the thing, giving their Sunday morning quarterback uh, or Monday morning yeah. quarterbacking on this thing. And I'm going, come on, this is this is this is life or death here. You know, this isn't some kind of fucking game. And MSNBC was treating it like a fucking game. Would you agree with me, Bree? Because you said that you were worried about the hell going in a handbasket. And this thing, the way it was handled, just turns it into a spectator sport. Yeah, I mean, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. You know, and there's, there's, they should have had, uh, well, and I hope they will have a higher threshold uh, in, the, you know, in going forward. Because yeah. as it is now, it's just ridiculous. Yeah. yeah. Trump's going to have a field day with this. These two nights, he's going to be Twitter going off on Twitter, and everyone's going to be, like, laughing with him. Well, but you've got to realize something. Um, Trump is beatable. Uh, the polls are showing that his margin of, uh, of winning is getting less and less. That there are five of these candidates who actually in the current polls, not only the ones that Fox did, but the ones that he did internally, have shown that any one of five different candidates could beat him, that the, Repu the de Democrats have. Now the question is, how are the Democrats going to fuck that up? Yeah. You know, I, I like the uh, commercials, Alex. They, if you notice, when they do the commercials, they get to run to the sidelines to, you know, get a drink of water, talk to their you know, agent or whatever, mm -hmm. get refreshed a little bit. And half of them probably <clears throat> half of them probably have a prostate problem too. So you know, <laughs> they've got to all go to the bathroom. You know. So, uh, but uh, did you find? Anybody who was watching it that Elizabeth Warren was getting a little bit too much time? You know, I think the one that she did well was well, she kept her mouth shut. Phil was a having a stroke, by the way. I just saw that. He was having yeah. a stroke. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was a racist gesture. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Candace B. Yeah. Mm. Candace D, sorry. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. She says on YouTube she agrees with me. Pete is is did did poorly, did lousy. She said. I don't think so. I I really think that he. Well, had, you're predisposed to liking him. Well, I I am predisposed to liking him, but I feel that he handled it well. And the only criticism of him in his community was by the police chief, whose police force is being assailed for having killed yeah. a black man. And he probably and is pissed at Buttigieg because Buttigieg isn't isn't defending the police department. Phil, come it's, on. It just translates <clears throat> to Pete Buttigieg lost the black vote. I don't think so. I don't think that I that's think so. uh, it's even part of it. I, I you know, uh, it, it's how a, many people do you know, Alex? Maybe not in New York City, but they'll. Give pay lip service mm -hmm. to you know being you know with the times, mm -hmm. but when they go into the voting booth, something else happens. <clears throat> how many people can you guess? Uh, look, at, how did Trump get elected? I mean, if well, you Trump got elected. No, Trump got elected by gerrymandering. He got elected by uh, uh, <clears throat> a, a, you know playing the Suppressing electoral college. Vote. He didn't win <clears throat> the election. He lost by three million votes. You know, so uh, uh, I think it was uh, the reason the Democrats lost that election was they didn't have a good ground game, you know, but and they played the system. You know, this is the second time, by the way, in, well, 20 years, something like that, maybe less than that, 15 years, 
that uh, the election has been won by the Electoral College and not by the popular vote. I mean, Gore had the popular vote, if you may remember, yep. but he didn't have the Electoral College. Uh, this has gone on too often for us to simply dismiss the Electoral College as just a fact of life, you know. Yes, Charlie. Orban says that the hosts are unprofessional. Who? Who's Orban? For for well, I'm oh, reading oh. the uh, the chats from YouTube. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think if we include them, it's better, and and hopefully they will call in. Yeah. Trump won in 2016 with 70,000 votes in three states total between the three states. Seven thousand votes. They suppressed over 500,000 black votes. Who suppressed them, Charlie? That was in Florida. Was that in, uh, oh, that, oh, you're oh, talking about like ID laws. That, that was big in, in, in Wisconsin. One out of every 20 in Florida if you were black, and I think it was one out of every 500 if you were white. Something you like know, that. Phil, you could, just, you, Phil, you they could. They don't do that shit Phil, you could you could you could, look, you could look interested. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tyson's Acosta says, "TV star Beth Chapman, wife of Dwayne the Dog Chapman, died today from yeah. lung cancer. She was yeah, that's all right. That, that's all right. Ah. That's already, I have no idea who the two of those are. I do. She, they she, they, they were on my show. Uh, serious. Really? Yeah." When? Yeah. Uh, many, uh, many, yeah. many years ago. In fact, I have a picture of him. He doesn't look like he looks now. He, he, you know, but I think it was them. Yeah. Oh, you mean on your serious accent? Yeah. Your serious yeah. show? Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Um, why? I would turn down somebody named Dog the Bounty Hunter. You know. But um, <laughs> um, Tyson Acosta says Phil is pissed. Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see here. Well, yeah, and then Candace D said we should gang up on Alex Bree, but she, she didn't. Yeah. Say, <laughs> you know, I. I mean, I don't. I wish she would call in. We need more. You know, I'll you tell know, you. I'll tell you. Uh, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, Elizabeth Warren was maybe the best out of the bunch. I mean, she was amazingly good well, and her. and well spoken. Huh? Well, you like Tulsi. Tulsi. Yeah, you like and Tulsi Gabbard because uh, 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 there's a, you know, you, you'd you like to have a president that you could fuck. <laughs> you know, as you could say, I'd fuck her, you know. You uh, can't say. Well, if that were true, then Melania can be president. It won't, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but she's already consorted with the enemy, so. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Or slept with the enemy. <laughs> slept with the enemy. Who was it that said uh, yeah. she had to lie to Melania and she didn't like to do it because she felt Melania was a good person? Who who was that? Might have been Hope Hicks or somebody. They had, she had, or no, it was Michael Cohen. I maybe Michael Cohen. One of the you know people I'm sure, said I'm that, sure that, Melania, that was the worst thing. I'm sure they, they Mel didn't mind you know doing for Trump, but they oh they Melania hated. always looks like she's thinking, what the fuck am I doing here? You know, why am I around this fat fuck? You know, I mean, he's getting more disgusting. <laughs> yeah. He's getting more disgusting as time goes on. You would think he'd become president and go, you know, I should lose a little weight. Should go on a diet, right? So I, because I'm in front of the public now. No, he just has his doctor. Uh, yeah, I mean, his his doctor says, no, you look really thin. Okay, good doctor, whatever his name is, that quack he has, you know. Uh, I mean, it's well, as as Trump gets older, it's harder to trade up. Like he would not be able to go for a, another younger woman, especially as president. So mm -hmm. she she wants him to win because I think as long as he's president, he won't change the first lady, you know. But if they were just in private life, he might be looking around. But oh. as he gets older, he'd be looking that gets around. Harder because he'd the be, money wait, issue. He'd be looking around. Wait just a minute. She'd be looking for the easiest out she could get. Yeah. I mean, do you really want to have to be around that fat fuck? If, what an if he if, what an unpleasant experience being married to that guy. 
you know. So. She's got all her family here. I, I'm trying to do everything he's I can to. Sign the papers I, on I'm that. doing everything I can to force Phil to just have to say something. <laughs> <laughs> I, you'll never hear me disparage Trump. Well, I, I very rarely use coarse language anyway, but you know, I would not disparage him in those ways because I don't think it ultimately benefits anything. Um, I will disagree with him on policies. I'll take him to task on the fact that he is not a uniter, that he does, his rhetoric is divisive. But um, in my mind, it doesn't do any good just to... Well, you know, I mean, I mean, he he uses derisive terms to describe people he doesn't yeah. like, and I think it's only fair for us to do the same thing back to him. You want to get in the mud with a pig? No. That's your decision. Well, you just but, call, but you just at the call, end of the day, you just called him a pig. You're be muddy and you the just pig's call, be happy. You just called him a pig. You know, <laughs> that's a metaphor. Hmm. <laughs> You know, but you call you call him a pig. That's uh, yeah. that was uh, that was part of the deal. Okay, uh, let me see here. So, so Phil, uh, you can say something now, Phil. We're through. Oh, you're not going to say anything. What? Who who died? And made you Marcel Marceau. <laughs> You laughed on that one. Believe me, I knew Marcel Marceau, and you're no Marcel Marceau. So, oh, here he comes. He put the earphones on. He wasn't even listening. Uh, yeah, says, well, I, I, had, I had it on the speaker, so I muted. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so you didn't hear it back. Yeah. Yeah. Well, did you watch any of the debate? I mean. Yeah, I did. Yeah, uh, and uh, who did you think was looking good, in spite of the fact you hated all of them? Well, uh, Delaney. Don't put, kinda, don't put that. Don't put that on. That don't put said, that on, Bree, because I can get I can get in trouble for that. Okay. Uh, Everybody's doing it. Uh, yeah. Delaney, uh, some of the some of the points that he made, I thought were reasonable. Uh, Tulsi Gabbard uh, was the best looking. Um, if you look Warren, closely, though, she's got a ba she's got bad complexion. Yeah, but that could be handled yeah. with makeup on. You makeup. know, yeah, well, it has and, been. Yeah, and uh, uh, I I didn't care for her chicken hawk uh, 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 referral to uh, Trump's cabinet. I thought that was kind of. Well, I don't uh, know what she said, but uh, you know, she it, it, she, she she was military, you know. Well, a chicken hawk yeah. has nothing to do with military. Uh, uh, although there was a sure, drudge these war hawks that don't want to serve themselves. Didn't chicken uh, did hawk. she use chicken yeah, hawk or did she use that's or somebody did, that goes after young or did she boys. use w war hawk? You know, she said no, chicken, hawk. chicken hawk is the person that did bushes for war but never wants to serve his family. To serve. Ah, okay. So mm -hmm. she was using a military term, which you wouldn't know, Phil, because you were never in the military. Yeah, and. Uh, yeah, she she was in the reserves for 16 years. Uh, well, yes, and, after serving. Well, let's say that uh, I was looking at Drudge, and they had a poll, and they said that Tulsi Gabbard won that poll uh, as to who won the debate. Yeah, and who who is it? And that was that a poll done by Drudge? Uh, it was. Uh, the Washington Examiner is the one that uh, put it up, but uh, and the it, Washington Examiner is what Phil? A, a newspaper. What kind uh, of newspaper, Phil? Uh, I don't know. They all suck. Uh, I guess the Washington Post is the communist one. Uh, yeah, that's so this, the communist. This must paper. be the real news. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you think that they're going to come out with a with a realistic poll? Hey, they had a thing. It had the seven or eight, whatever it was that was on there, or ten that were on there, and you were you just pushed a button, and it gave you uh, the results hold as on, to. Hold, hold on a second. Is, is this the one that he usually puts up? Let me see here. Drudge uh, report. I gotta open it up again. Drudge this. report. Drudge report. Yeah. Report. Report. Okay. There we go. Drudge report. Okay, uh, uh, here we go. 
uh, let me see here. Oh, uh, the, oh, no, this is a Drudge Poll. It's the oh. Drudge Poll. Well, it, when you click on it, it uh, comes up as a Washington Examiner uh, well, let story. Me see here. Okay, so there's, who do you there's think, a poll. Who, who do you think won? And then I, I'll go put, underneath I'll put that Elizabeth and Warren, and I'll go vote, and then it comes out with who. And Tulsi Gabbard it came out uh, on top. But... This is among people who go. She can to, be on top. No, yeah, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. This is people who <laughs> went to the Drudge Report, okay, yeah. and voted. Who are the people who go most In to the, the Drudge whole, Report to get their news? Uh, I don't know. They have a lot of diverse uh, number of writers and. Uh, no, 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 no. Know. All all Drudge Report is is a link page. But he links to things which are right wing uh, favoring. Okay. But he, he is nothing but a link page. There's very little original journalism on Drudge. But then he does this little poll. Okay. And uh, Julian Castro came out least. Uh, oh, he, he was. Uh, he re, he reminded ended. me of the guy that was yelling about the small hands uh, to Trump. Uh, well, what's his name from Florida? Uh, Julian Castro uh, just seemed like such a m munchkin, you know? A munchkin? Yeah. It was like, I want to say something. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, the debate's over, Alex. They're all going to be rushing to Gabnet. Yeah. They're yes. all, uh, Watch yeah. your numbers fly <laughs> now. Yeah. Anybody who wants to uh, add in their two cents worth into this. Uh, I, I'm telling you, as I just look at them, <clears throat> I can tell you which ones look presidential and which ones don't. Uh, you know, and Marshall McLuhan said the medium is the message. So, like, whatever they say in a televised debate doesn't make as much impact as just how they look. Uh, Warren, back, Warren didn't look presidential. She looked angry. Tulsi Gabbard came out first. <laughs> Elizabeth yeah. Warren, in this poll, came out second. Mm -hmm. John Delaney not, came in third, and Bill de Blasio came in fourth. I think de Blasio made mm. a good showing tonight. But quite frankly, I don't think he's going to become president of the United States. Uh, what got me was Beto O'Rourke, who I, I get to dislike more and more every day. Did you hear Spanish. him when he went into his Spanish thing? And yeah. out of nowhere, out of nowhere. As he's say, pandering. He, that was pandering. Absolute pandering. And did you see the look on Cory Booker's face while he was doing it? Yeah, he was saying, I wish I could speak Spanish. Well, no, he then Candace, he, he went on Candace and spoke. Candace wanted to chat. You're wrong. It was not Gabbard. It was uh, Klobuchar who was super mean to her staff. Uh, Klobuchar was, was mean to her staff, but I yes. think that uh, Warren is just an, uh, comes across as angry. No, I think she comes across as professorial is what she does. I think that's yeah. the problem. You know, she's maybe a little too literate, a little too educated to make a good showing. But I think that her thoughts and her, her, her way of expressing herself and, and the way she put things. Trump and, yawns at Democratic debate, says it's boring. Who? Trump. Oh, Trump. well, Trump. Fuck, fuck Trump. I was looking for Trump's like tweet. like Phil, who Fuck gives Trump. a who? It's like but Phil, right who gives on. a shit what People he thinks. Want entertainment. Yes. They Je want entertainment. Jeff's got his if, hand. Uh, if yeah. Tulsi could juggle yeah. while she was answering a question, yeah, she'd win. She would win everything. If, win all the polls. If she would t were topless, she'd get my vote. Yes, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. I was curious. I was uh, very curious as to what everybody thought about what Warren said when she was talking about. Getting by changing the the problems with the guns, mm -hmm. and to take a let's say a strategic approach or a research approach mm -hmm. to understanding what the what the problems really are, because they're changing a lot. Yeah, yeah. And I th I think that was pretty. Pretty uh, okay. Yeah. No, I thought uh, I thought as I watched it that Elizabeth Warren was the most grounded and the mo had explained what was wrong with America better than anybody that I could think of. Now we get into this whole question of the immigration thing, and uh, today we had something happen. 
Do you see the photograph, Phil? Yeah. Uh, this is a guy breaking the law. He, t he, he put his family in jeopardy uh, by entering at a non-authorized uh, uh, point you of entry. You can't just say, wow, that's sad. Hey, it, it, you know, it, it's sad that people no, will break Phil, the why, law. Why, Phil, why can't you just say it's sad? And then maybe later on say, well, you know, he really shouldn't have taken that kind of risk. Oh, okay. It's sad. He really shouldn't have no, taken no, that no, kind no, of risk. No, 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 no. Not after I ask you to say it, Phil. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. It's very sad. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, his daughter, you know, and I can understand how this happened. He, he got his daughter across the river. He told her to stay there. And then he went back for his wife, but his daughter wouldn't stay there, and she went after him, and then they both got caught up in the current and drowned. I, I uh, don't know the whole story. Uh, I thought that there was some reason they were they were being held somewhere. No, or no they, they were they were crossing, and uh, what happened was no the they father, they had tried to they had tried to get into the United States somewhere else, and they were turned back, and so they went downstream. And made this crossing there, and that's what killed them. Uh, isn't the, uh, the deal? That, could, could uh, we couldn't we come up with a better solution? Yeah. Build the wall. Hear crickets, Phil. Yeah, Hear those crickets. It. No, it's that's uh, that or change change the law so that uh, the loopholes. Uh, of asylum, which, uh, and these are really people that are looking for economic asylum. They're not looking for political asylum. Uh, you know, they're in a country, Mexico, at that point, that isn't persecuting them, that will allow them to stay there, yet they make the effort to come into the United States because they're looking for uh, uh, economic asylum. Mm -hmm. Just like your grandparents. No, my my grandparents yep. came over because they were persecuted by the Russians, uh, great grandparents. I don't know that. When they come to the border, I would have no way to know. Well, that they they went to Ellis Island. What if that guy and his daughter were persecuted by the same type of forces yeah. that our grandparents? Were? At, at we don't seven, know that. We have at to hear seven that years old, my great grandfather was forced to fight in the Russian army. I don't, uh, I don't know that that's true. Sorry. You you call me a liar. I'm saying that I don't know. You're that calling them liars. Just like I don't know that 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 guy with his daughter, what what he was doing and why. I don't know. Yeah, Alex, do you like crickets? I thought I'd play them because that's that's, that's the kind of response you should get to anything you say. Hey, you know, ask the question. I gave the answer. You're the one. You asked me the question. I didn't volunteer. Hey, Phil. There's a guy who shoplifts down on the corner street. He just shoplifted. Can I shoot him? Can I kill him dead? No, because the crime would, doesn't... No, he's illegal. He did something illegal. No, the crime... Why can't I you're, kill you're, him? You're being, you're being closed-minded. The crime no, does you're not saying is fit anybody the who punishment. Does anything illegal can, no. can be killed. No, I didn't say that they could be killed. They got killed on their own accord. Their, their death it can't be blamed on anyone but themselves. They took, they took a chance and they wound up losing their lives. Uh, they made a decision, and that decision was a bad one. The guy who shoplifts, uh, it's, uh, uh, you know... Is he, illegal. He's it, it may He's be illegal, illegal, but you're being, you're, being, uh, you're being moronic in the way that you're uh, assessing this. Well, no, you're being moronic in thinking no, no, that no, Trump didn't now. cause this situation. No, Hold on a second. You're, you're acting like uh, Trump has no responsibility in this matter. He has, he caused, he has caused this international crisis, Phil. No, the, the, your Democrats have caused this international crisis. Oh, don't p blame it on the and Democrats. The Congress has don't blame it on the crisis. Democrats. But Bree, Boy, the you guy just who believe everything wait, wait that fucking asshole you Trump tells answer, you. Bree? No. Well, well, fuck you. Uh, look, Bree, if a guy shoplifts... That doesn't He's, It's illegal. I don't want to hear anything about him. He's oh, illegal. That's, that's because he you has got, no rights. Nah, 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 nah. I don't want to no. hear you. You sound like yeah, a two-year-old, Bree. You're, you you're a lot smarter than that. You're a lot smarter than that. Don't act like that. You don't want to hear this guy's story and his daughter's story. 
No, you don't want to hear that. Smarter than that. Don't act like a moron. You know that a guy who shoplifts, if the punishment doesn't fit the crime, there's no reason for the person to lose his life over shoplifting. Now, no one caused them, the, the daughter and you the... You don't know that. You don't know that. The story I, I, I heard was they went to a legitimate crossing and they were turned away. This, this is not the story that uh, was advertised. This uh, is the story that I hear, and Alex also said it. Alex, did you, you just say that? Why? I, I don't, I don't uh, believe that you that said was that the... You they went to a legitimate crossing. Yes, they went to a legitimate crossing. They were turned away, right. and then they went downstream and crossed Well, they there. had a choice. They could have stayed uh, in Mexico and applied for asylum, or... They could have risked their lives, and that's what they did. And they and they took a calculated and, and how risk many people and how many how many people's asylum are we accepting these days? Uh, we've got Zero. millions or uh, thousands of them. No, 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 uh, no. How many are we accepting? I don't know. None. Zero. Well, I don't know. I, I, all I'm saying is, in this case, the punishment did not fit whatever. But crime. it was a punishment break. It was, and it was a decision made by a father that wound, that wound up costing him and his daughter their Once lives. Once again, Phil, you don't know what happened before. It Neither doesn't do I. matter. It, it does doesn't matter. matter. Just because I can't matter. get across the street, okay, does that mean I should In my case, the guy goes into the store and he can't buy it. There's no cashier, so he takes it. Is it illegal? I mean, nobody yes. was there to take his money and he needed to drink yes, the water. Yes, it's illegal. Okay. And, but, but it's not something you get shot for. The uh, as far as uh, as far as the, uh, the guy, whether he got turned away or not, he made a decision afterwards that cost his, the life of his family, and uh, that was his decision. It wasn't Trump's decision. It was his decision. He's not a victim. Yes, he is. Yeah, yeah. How about his daughter? It was Trump's decision to, to turn away people seeking asylum. If that's you're, Trump's decision. If, if you can't get across the street, and you're in New York City, and there's all these high-rise buildings, and you can't get across the street because of all the traffic, and you decide to jump off one building Phil, over to Phil, another Phil, so you Phil, can get across st the street. Stop, stop, that, stop uh, with uh, the uh, whataboutism uh, bullshit. That isn't what, well, that's exactly what Bree just did with his uh, uh, shoplifter. So, you know, the, the thing is, this is a bad decision. The man made a bad decision. His family paid the price. He paid the price. Is there anybody else who wants to call and talk to this creep and set him straight? <laughs> the only one to hear that's straight is me. You want me to play the crickets again? Yeah. I thought you didn't allow, uh, you know, because I, I disconnected my... Uh, well, I'll tell you, I, I do agree with uh, Trump that we do have a crisis on the southern border. And I don't believe that there has been a solution. I think it's getting worse. And when did it start need, getting? When did it, solutions. When did it start Started getting worse? What have we become? Bree, Bree, a country Bree, where when, uh, we, Bree, when did it start getting worse? I would say. I mean, I don't know, but I'd say that in the last year or two is when we have heard the most about it, and when I feel it has gotten worse. What I don't understand is if you know Trump is saying we're closed for business. And I think that message has got out there very clearly, and still, pe still people come. They must be extremely desperate or in very dire circumstances. I don't think anybody would say, "Hey, you know, we're not living a, quite a great life here. We could let's go to the U.S. where we could do much, much better." Eh, just why not? I think that they have to be in some seriously desperate uh, situation. Why can't we come up with a solution? For example. Um, uh, why can't we build uh, a, like a new city there and, and say, okay, all the guys 18 to 25 over here, all the way, you're going to be workers. You're, why can't we divide that labor, have them build their own homes like the Amish? Well, my, or, question, my question is this, Bree, and uh, I think it's an important question, and that is why can't this president, a president is supposed to be the leader of people. He is supposed to be a... a Pyracal of wisdom. Why can't he come up with a solution to this humanitarian crisis that's humanitarian in its response? 
and he be- <laughs> and he can't because he doesn't have a humanitarian bone in his fucking body. Yes, uh, Jeff. He doesn't want to do it. That's not. It's of no interest to him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Matter of fact, he'd prefer to 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 get to see these people die. Yeah. Yep. I don't know. You know, we, we didn't see we didn't see any remorse on the president. I don't, I don't uh, necessarily uh, those two people. We didn't see any remorse on the for president's the number of Yeah. We didn't see any remorse on the president's part today because of what happened. He just, you know, blamed it on the Democrats. Huh? You know, there was no He enjoys their pain. That's the that's the feature. They're suffering. Well, here comes Patrick. Let me see here. Let me uh uh, fit him in. Let's see here. He would be in the number just, five slot. Um, here we go. Um, Darth Pat. There we go. <coughs> Hello, Patrick. Are there? Well, no, that's not it. Hold on a second. I just, for me, I think we need a better system. I don't mind that we, if we deny people for whatever reason, okay. but they have to be given a fair shake. Uh, and however we have to do that, we should do it. Yeah. And and nobody should be turned away then only to be placed in a situation where they then take take action into their own hands and they take an illegal action. Uh, I just I, it it I just don't think that we're that kind of country. I, mm-hmm. I don't want to think so. How about you? I'd pa- like pa- us to be better. Patrick and also you- the other thing, you know, we we can take more people. Mm-hmm. We uh we are not at our maximum. Uh, there are countries. In fact, in order to compete in the future, we need people, um, and so we, we need a constructive way to create uh, opportunities and possibilities. And, and in a way, they can be off the grid. I mean, if you look at, for example, we have the Amish subculture. They really, they to a large extent, they don't interact uh, in Pennsylvania with the English. Uh, they do furniture and, and you know, and they, they have uh, construction jobs or whatnot, but they're kind of self-contained communities. Uh, they're off the grid. By and the way, for the first... We could build yeah. similar cities in, yeah. in the Southwest uh, to house these people and get them part of the system, get them tax paying, yeah. make sure they're tax paying, make sure they can join the army, right. make sure that... You know, they okay. can become part of, uh, for of a, the system. Uh, for the first time in the history of this program, Phil has raised his hand. Yes, Phil. Uh, you know, <laughs> if we have laughing. so much. If we have so much room in this country, mm-hmm. what what are we doing with all the homeless on the streets of Los Angeles, San Francisco, New York? What? what why? Why is uh, there feces? That is oh, mat- it's not a problem. We, we we can we can we can take it's care of people we from other countries. Phil, let, let me let me let, if, if you can shut up for a second, I maybe can explain it to you. Homelessness is not necessarily a problem. In many cases, it's a disease. In many cases, it's a mental problem. It is, it is not necessarily the fact that people don't want to work or they want to be lazy or we don't have enough jobs, although we really don't have enough jobs anymore. We don't have enough houses. We, you know, okay, we, Forbin, you're right. What, what did Forbin you know, say? Bruce, Forbin says you're a bad. babbler. Listen more. Oh, yeah. Fuck you, Forbin. Yes, uh, Patrick. Let Patrick talk. Well, Phil, um, if you drove south to San Diego, you could find uh, one of my best friends. Uh, I've known him since 1981. Uh, he'd been living on the streets of La Jolla um, because that pretty rich area. It's a uh, magnet for uh, homeless. And he was a biochemist for many years, worked for two uh, large uh, pharmaceutical companies, and basically had uh, some psychological issues that um, never got taken care of. He didn't want to. That's part of the other thing. He didn't want to. And I'm I'm not letting him off the hook on... It's just psychological issues. He did nothing to help himself. And then in the end, he showed up at my house and he dropped off whatever belongings he had and said, 
I'm going to live in San Diego on the street. And he'd been there since mm -hmm. um, 2004 or five. And I caught him on YouTube. There was somebody interviewing homeless people. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, there he was in the background with a paper bag chugging a 40 or whatever it was. And that was about 2012 or 13. So, uh, you know. I understand, Patrick, you have this one example. But there are tons of families living in their cars, living in tents, because they cannot afford to leave the area. They cannot afford uh, housing. And, it, you know, can you believe that any family wants their children living in a tent on a sidewalk? Uh, can, you believe uh, that, can, can you believe that anybody like us don't care enough to try and do something about it, Phil? Well, and, and what's happening is, is we should do something about that before we start taking care of other countries' problems. Uh, yes, Sir Patrick. In Milwaukee, we've got a uh, tent city that's starting. It started last year, and it uh, revived itself in the spring. In the wintertime, it went down. All of the people are most went into some sort of uh, shelters. They want to be on the streets, Phil. Whether I don't believe that. Not, and, and not all of them, but there are a number of them that are choosing that life because what they don't want, like in a, a shelter, there are rules. There are, there's curfews, you can't drink, you can't do drugs. Okay. And there are a lot of people on I the streets. Okay, Bree has I've his hand up. Bree has his hand up. Bree. So let's say, let's say that the woman of, who had the husband and the daughter die. Let's say that she's a capable individual. That she's rational. She can add one plus one, A, B, C. Bring her in and say, you can live in this place, but we're going to train you on how to help us with our homeless. We're going to train you about mental health issues. We're going to train. If you agree to come in and take on that job for three years. You can live in this city and you get this apartment or whatever. I mean, in other words, why can't we redirect and, and bring in uh, the talent that, you know, that we potentially could need? These people can be shaped. Our forefathers who came to this country did the same. I just don't understand why we think they're all uh, somehow incapable of, you know, of, of offering to our country. Let's fix one problem with another. Uh, you know, with a solution to another. I just, can I, can, I think there are well, ideas like let that. Me, that let me just bring something. Let me bring something up here. Um, we're talking about a crisis at the border. Uh, this crisis, to my knowledge, was never even talked about or considered a crisis until Trump became president. And it's a crisis, I believe, of his own doing. In other words, he has exacerbated yep. it by uh, by saying there is a crisis there. there you know, it's kind of like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Phil, when did you hear about a crisis at the border? In 2008, uh, Obama uh, made a number of uh, pleas to, uh, to deal with the border situation. He was the one that built those detention facilities, which you call cages, that that are how. But they weren't meant for kids. They weren't meant for children. No, because that wasn't what they was weren't meant across. for children. They were meant for people who were problematic. That Phil. wasn't what was coming across at that time. But uh, now, what we have is uh, we have uh, people that are saying, if we don't come now. They, and they changed the law and they closed the asylum loopholes that we've been using and we've been told what to say, uh, then uh, we may not get in. So it's they're, they're here for the pot of gold. We've just been joined, by the way, by, uh, let me see Dr. here. Dr. Stopper. Uh, well, uh, make, wait a minute. Harley, let me, uh, let me can cancel here and let me go here again and let me get him in here. Uh, let's see here. Where, where, where is he? Oh, there it is. There it is. I have to always find the right. I always have to find the right name. Okay, and uh, we've been joined by uh, Kevin. Just think, pig. Uh, yes, uh, 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 Kevin. You, you've been listening to what we're talking about, right? Uh, I was kind of hearing in the background as Phil was rambling on there. Yeah. Yeah. What do you? I'm the rambler. 
<laughs> yeah. What do you think? I mean, did you did you did you hear about a massive crisis the at the border the prior to Trump becoming president and making it an issue, kind of a wish fulfilling prophecy? Uh, say say it again. He, in other words, Trump made. I, I didn't hear that much about a crisis at the border before oh, not at Tr all. before Trump became president and started saying there was a crisis at the border. Yeah, because he wanted his wall. Yeah, that's what started it all. He just wanted he wanted to build his his concrete wall and put his name on it. I mean that that's what it seems like. Was there a crisis at the Canadian border? No. And so he didn't ask for a wall there. But he asked for a wall between Mex the, su the southern border Canadians because there white. is a there is a there is a crisis. Canadians at the, at the are Canadian white. border. No, at yeah, it, 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 yeah, there's a point that uh, you didn't hear him because you were talking over yourself, Phil. But uh, Charlie said, say it again, Charlie. Canadians are white. That's why there's no crisis at the Canadian border. Now, I don't think this is a racist thing. Oh, you bullshit. don't? You don't? Yeah, that's Look, right. even Patrick, who's Let a Republican, yeah. is, is laughing at you. Yeah, this is the guy pulling the, the racist Wait a minute, card. wait a minute. Patrick, why are you laughing? What kind of bullshit statement is that? It's the truth. Trump yeah. doesn't hate white people. He hates brown people and black people. He doesn't people. hate brown people. He doesn't bullshit hate blacks. He doesn't hate He's brown. done more for blacks in this country oh. than any president. Oh, yeah. He, his whole history shows he He's hates been black. willing to charge oh, them oh. higher rents and a victim. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Good idea. Mm -hmm. So, you've gone to your house. Yeah. Now, who are you? Were you complaining about what Charlie said, Patrick? Uh, there's no point in saying it because none of you can see the logic in what I just, what I was saying. Well, say, no, explain the logic, though. All right. You can't help the color of the people south of the border. Mm -hmm. They are all brown, period. That's the country they're coming from. That's their skin pigment. The problem is they're coming into our country illegally. If they were white coming in, it wouldn't matter. The point is, they're coming in illegally, brown or not. It doesn't matter the darkness of their pigment. I mean, I'm sure well, I, 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 I would disagree with you to this extent, okay, uh, Patrick? <laughs> I lived in Florida for a short time. And do you know who the major amount of people coming to Florida were? Cubans. No. No. Canadians. They come uh, down. No, it yeah, it was the it was the destination for for Canadians. Some people and Canadians want to come across the border and go down to Florida for a while. Ah, come on in, just come on in. It's okay. Yeah, that's because they have no intention of going on welfare and staying. Uh, nobody's saying that anybody's trying coming Did here for the welfare. Yeah, it's, it's free medical. Like that, free that, 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 that. Phil, that was a racist statement. You're a it's racist. It's the truth. Why don't you admit you're a racist? Okay, I'm a racist. Of course, I don't like Jews because you're a hey, cop. You know, uh, the, you know the the thing is, uh, in this country, when they come over, the system, the de the government system, is set up to take these people and turn them into wards of the state for many many generations. They've done it with uh, with the black race. They've done it uh, and put uh, tons of uh, blacks on welfare. A generation after generation and Candace Owens is the first person that I've heard that says you know what this has got to stop mm -hmm. no one in my family has ever been on welfare I'm not talking about no you. one since slavery ended no one in my family has ever been on welfare you know wait a minute let uh, me let me ask let me let me ask let me ask Charles more. something Charles mm -hmm. it, yes. does Phil sound like a racist to you Yes. Okay. Well, maybe you just don't like the truth. The truth is racist based? Yeah, the truth is all of these black no. you know, none of these brown people who are illegal are on welfare. They can't get welfare because they would get caught and sent out of the country. No, not but in sanctuary cities. In sanctuary cities they're not even allowed to ask them if they're not citizens. Uh, they get they immediately get 
all sorts of social services, better services than you or I. Oh, Phil, name a sanctuary city. Offhand. San Francisco. San Francisco is a sanctuary city? And, and, mm -hmm. and how are they living out that sanctuary city status? What are they doing? Just not turning people in, I guess, when right. the ICE people come. And, and, and they're not recognizing yeah. illegal... Uh, yeah, illegal yeah. aliens. But are, are they are they suddenly giving them all kinds of welfare and free homes and everything like that? Yes. Oh, they are. Oh, okay, I didn't realize that. I I <laughs> hadn't heard that, but you've now educated me. Yes, uh, Jeff. Austin was a sanctuary city. They weren't doing any of that crap. Yeah, that's because they're uh, in Texas, Jeff. And the whole point uh, is that the federal government wasn't going to pay for it. They weren't going to do it. Uh, Jeff. I have. Two people who come and clean our house occasionally. They get paid for it. They live in Connecticut. They're illegals. They're nice people. Mm -hmm. Their daughter is trying to get at the college this year. Don't ever run for public office. Yeah, put your <laughs> hands behind your back. <laughs> but if they die, yeah. well, you know, that's their fault. They're not oh, supposed to be it's, here. It's other countries. It would be country. my fault if I died yeah. too. Hey, Phil, to Phil, country, Phil I mean, by virtue yeah, of what Phil, we, uh, Phil, whatever yeah. happened to the pride this country had, in which we embraced immigration and we embraced an immigrant culture, and because we were an immigrant culture, whatever happened to that? Why all of a sudden don't we embrace immigration any longer? We do embrace immigration. No, no. It's called legal I'm immigration. I'm talking about encouraging. No, they're trying to change the These things. These people are turned away from applying for legal. For legal, they tried legal, and we we failed them. Somehow, the system didn't let them do that. You know, uh, today's they hate news. Legal immigrants too. Well, they can stay in Mexico and apply for uh, status, or they can apply in their own country for status, and then they can come here legally. Uh, the woman you live with is mm -hmm. it was not an American, right? Not originally. Not originally, but she has become a citizen. Yes. Uh huh. How long was she here before she was a citizen? Uh, she uh, came here at sixteen. Uh, she married at seventeen, and she was a citizen. I don't know. Maybe it took five years. Mm -hmm. She was married for twenty years before uh, meeting Did me. Did she have the legal husband. paperwork? Sure. And her. Right? Yeah, her her uh, her sister's a dentist. Uh, she she comes from a family of fifteen. You know how the Filipinos are. And uh, her sister's a dentist. Her other sister's a lawyer. Uh, her father was a senator in the Philippines. The um, is any the, one uh, of these fifteen kids a deadbeat? By the way, no, no, uh -oh. they aren't. Uh oh, really? And and you know, and she's uh, she's one of uh, three. Tri uh, she's a triplet. And uh, oh, God. the the, uh, the the thing is, uh, her brother was in the U.S. military in in the Philippines, and he got citizenship, and he was able to sponsor uh, the rest of his family, hmm. kind of the way you Trump, know, Trump did. Wants to end is, that, that. is that chain migration that you just talked about? Yes, yes that's Trump exactly what it is. I see. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, he hates but all it, kinds it, of it's Don't it, right legal. now it's legal. If it wasn't legal, it would be a different story. But I don't think they're going to end it. Hmm. They may talk about he's it, but I don't think they're end it. Well, he's trying he's his trying best to build a best. wall, and there's no wall. I think that he also needs to build larger processing centers so that they the just people got can come in and have a fair shake so they don't have to go down the road and try to cross the river. Well, so they, they, to, they just got $4.5 billion dollars to, uh, to to help with that. Now, let me let me explain. You know, let me explain something. Let me t mention something here that I think is important. The reason I am so in, into this discussion and into immigration and people anybody being allowed to immigrate into this country was that during World War II, uh, relatives of mine, Jews from Europe were denied the ability to come into this country and to get to to literally seek asylum in this country from Those the horrors. Hold on, you let me finish, Phil. I'm agreeing with you. No, but you interrupted me. Okay. I mean, I'm trying to say something. I'm trying to get my point across. 
Uh, and ever since, for years, I have always felt horribly about the fact of the way Jews were handled in World War II and not allowed to immigrate into this country. In fact, I had a good friend of mine who lived in Germany, escaped Germany, went to Cuba, okay, and then immigrated into the United States because if you paid, uh, um, uh, what was his name, uh, the, uh, uh, the dictator uh, down there? Uh, at the Castro. Uh, Porfirio no, Rubioso no, no, was involved no, no, in that. No, fact, he wasn't even Cuba. No, no, he was in Spain. Uh, no, you were talking no, about... No, uh, no, in Spain it was, uh, what's his name? Franco. It was Franco. Franco took a million Jews. Right. Took a million Jews and said, yeah. but you can't stay here because I can't afford to have all you people here. But anyway, uh, Batista, uh, Batista in, in, uh, uh, in Cuba. In Cuba. He was the dictator. dictator. You would pay the Batista government a certain amount of money and you were allowed to come into Cuba. Then you got Cuban citizenship immediately. And then you were able to migrate into the United States. And that's the way a lot of Jews got here. But they couldn't come directly over and say, hey, I'm a Jew, I want asylum, because we weren't accepting Jews. And knowing that, and knowing how many of my people were killed as a result of that policy, I don't want to see it happen to anybody else. And I don't know how you can either, Phil, as a Jew. I, if, if these are legitimate refugees, I don't want to see it happen to them either. But then, but well, 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 would you consider all those Jews that tried to get in here legitimate refugees? They were coming out of concentration camps. No, they, they weren't, weren't Phil, just looking th for Phil, economic. Phil, they weren't coming out of concentration camps. This was during World War II when they were throwing them into concentration camps. The boatloads that were off of New Jersey were were camp survivors. No, but those, we're not talking about oh, them. We're talking during the war, Phil. Well, uh, Jews, America is a very anti-Semitic country. Well, they, you know something? It's also, I guess, very anti-Mexican as well. And by the way, should we mention yeah. anti-black well, there, and no anti-anything that is different than they are? There is no equivalency there. Hey, we're, we're, hey. What? This is an anti-Semitic country. And uh, the reason that they uh, Phil, are, Phil, you support Phil, people then like then How Iran can you, if you, if you realize that, Phil, how can you feel this way about anybody who would want to migrate to because this country? Because there isn't a moral equivalency here. Yes, what, there is an know, absolute you, you moral support, equivalency. The you will I'm telling the you, Phil, Iranians. Phil, Phil, I'm telling you the reason I feel the way I do is because what happened to Jews during World War II? And apparently, as a Jew, okay. you don't feel that same affinity. No. Uh, what happened? Then you're happened. a Shonda for the Goyim. Hey, what happened happened. Uh, you know, Phil and, knows. Jeff I'm, knows what I'm I, talking and about. That's why I support Israel because now, as a Jew, there is a place in the world that Jews can go to, and call their homeland. And you would support the uh, the Iraqi it's called Brooklyn, Iranians by the way. It's called who Brooklyn. Support terrorism and want to see the destruction of Israel. No, no, don't start up with that. That's not the discussion. That's not the discussion, Phil. Well, that is yeah, not the it, fucking discussion. You, you, would su you would support that. That is not the discussion. That is not the discussion right now, Phil. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's not the discussion. Yeah, and and by the way, while we were uh, while the Jews were going into Israel, what was happening? to the people who lived in that area. Hey, you know... They the, were being displaced, that, Phil. Yeah, they were nomadic people. They, they were, were displaced no, they before they were They were forced to become nomadic. They were never nomadic. They were nomadic for before centuries. Before 1948, they were not nomadic. No, they. some of them were nomadic, but not the ones that lived in Israel. Uh, or yeah. Palestine, and, as it and, was called And, you know, called in Israel... Time. Uh, the popula the Arab population oh, gee, let's lives not go very to that. comfortably. Let's not go to that. Israelis. That's not what we're discussing, uh, Phil. What we're discussing is that whatever happened to this this thing we believed in, that this was a country of immigrants, what made it great was immigration, what made it great were immigrants who came into this country. That was before and 2001. That was before 9-11. Uh, Phil, when Phil, 9 11 Phil, happened, Phil, you're racist. We had to you're, protect you're, our you're, you're racist, and you don't really honor what happened to the Jews during World War II at vis a vis no, this country. When you, and, but we didn't have a drug problem like we do oh, today. Oh, we didn't have. Yeah, and that drug uh, problem is caused by the, oh, that's being heroin. that's being caused by the Mexicans. 
coming it's into this coming country. Across it's the it, it, it's border. being caused by like that there's kid a, and a, her father who are lying no, dead in the in the Rio Grande border, and and that is coming across, and they're being financed by the cartels, and the cartels oh. are moving their drugs. Boy, into you this really country. believe that shit, Actually, don't you? You really believe ports, that shit through the land. Phil, you believe that shit, don't you? Um, yes, Jeff. Yeah, they got mules. They carry yes, it Jeff. on their back. Yes, Jeff. A lot of these people are not Mexicans. A lot of them are Central American people who come from Central America. To the get journey. there, they have to go through Mexico. They're trying to get into the United States. What's wrong with staying in Mexico if they're afraid, uh, afraid for their lives? Because well, you can be afraid for your life in Mexico, Phil. Uh, well, the Mexican government is offering them work and uh, and, and, so, and so, you know, uh, all sorts of benefits uh, for them to stay in Mexico. Well, you really believe this shit, don't you? Yeah. You really believe this shit. What benefit? What work are they offering? Uh, okay. Uh, P Patrick has his hand up. I think it's Patrick's turn. And I believe this shit, too, because to me, logically, if you're looking for asylum... You're going to go into the first country that offers it to you. And if the first country is Mexico, that's where you go. And then if it's like you said, Alec, with the Jews coming in and going to Cuba first, why don't they get their citizenship in Mexico and then they could immigrate into the U.S. legally? Well, uh, because we don't know, Patrick, to be honest with you, what the reality of that is. Okay. I mean... What is the reality? Will they give them citizenship automatically? Say, come on in, be a citizen. I don't know if it's that easy. Well, it may not be because maybe they give a shit about their borders and not wanting everybody just to move into their country. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff had his hand up. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, in 1920, a lot of Jews came to Mexico, Cuba, Argentina, this, that, and the other thing. And... Luckily, a lot of them can ultimately come to the United States. But it's not that easy for these people from well, Central America with, with, and Mexico. With the, with the Jews, a lot of the Jews who came did have money with them. And so they were able to buy citizenship from Cuba, citizenship from Mexico, and so on. These families are not able to do that. These families do not have the wherewithal financially. I'm sure if they had the money... They could do it, but they don't. I thought they were paying these coyotes uh, fi up to fifteen thousand dollars to transport well, them to the U.S. Well, you don't know. US you don't know what the truth is here. We're being fed so many lies about this immigration problem that, quite frankly, I don't know what the truth is or isn't. Yes, Patrick. And that you're, you're admitting that you don't know what truth is either, correct? Right. Okay. So then. Any of us could have valid points here. There's no right or wrong that's yep. been discussed tonight. Except if, for, except, if, agree, yeah. if all of us agree that none of us know exactly what's going on, then none of us are exactly wrong because we are working on the information that we have available to us. Yeah, but this whole thing about it being a problem, a, a current a crisis, as it were, is only something that's a manifestation of the Trump administration. It hasn't been until he became president that it was even referred to as a crisis on the border. And he, right. he, he wait a minute, hold on a second, Phil. He created that crisis. A we lot of it. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It, it was, to me, it, it was to uh, somehow elevate himself mm -hmm. to fix a problem that maybe was not as problematic as it is now. Um, but we still don't know all the information. So I, based on that, I'm not going to say any of us on here are necessarily right or wrong. Uh, the only thing that I would agree with, like you said, is the term crisis, I think, was misused. I, I think it was a, a catchphrase, almost like a political uh, slogan. And all of a sudden, there it is. It's a crisis, and Democrats are using it, Republicans are using it, and third parties are using it. Everybody's saying crisis, when in fact, maybe it isn't necessarily a crisis along the entire border. So, you know, 
when they detained uh, the the uh, the people coming across and they separated the children from the parents uh, because they treated them with a zero tolerance and they said that uh, uh, this um, that the people coming across are breaking the law and so therefore they're being detained and they tried to separate and there was such an outcry that they stopped separating the families but they didn't have the facilities available that allowed them to stay together so now there is a crisis on the border do you not enforce the law uh, just because there's an onslaught of people uh, that are are being inconvenienced right now and being held in these facilities because they broke the law uh, do you do you not uh, go with zero tolerance or do you just allow uh, people that come across the border uh, Phil, unvetted. Phil, I'm saying to you that this is a uh, a crisis uh, which was a, a crisis of wish fulfillment on the part of uh, uh, of Trump. That there was no, we didn't call it a crisis before Trump made it into a crisis. Okay, it and once, started. Yes, uh, go ahead, uh, it Kevin. A let, Kevin talk, let Kevin talk, Phil. Let Kevin talk. The first person to use that word was Mr. Trump, and I'm sorry, but he started that word, and then it it wasn't a crisis in the beginning. It was it was a, a word that was used when he wanted to influence the wall. And once That's he called it, it once he called it a crisis, Kevin. And correct it started me. to be a crisis. Yeah. Now it is a crisis. It is now. Yeah, but let me let me ask you this, Phil. Uh, all those overflowing uh, detention centers and everything else. It's a crisis now. Yeah, it is. Yeah, but I mean, if, uh, 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 Kevin, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you know, I think that what he did, number one, is create the crisis. I agree. Uh, by by uh, saying it was a crisis, and then doing absolutely nothing since then to solve the crisis. Well, he's I agree. Wait, but, let me, it, it, was, it was influenced by him not doing anything and pissing everybody else off not to do anything. It influenced the Democrats to do nothing more yeah. because he pissed them off. Right. It's, it's, it's a combination of both in my eyes. You know, it, it is always the uh, the uh, way in which certain people, and I won't say the Hitler name here, but it, to use a group of people as a scapegoat. Yes, uh, uh, Charlie. Charlie, you turned I'll it around. Remind you that during the first uh, during the first two years of Trump's presidency, he had the House and the Senate. Now he did not do one fucking thing about the wall. It was no crisis then. It didn't become a crisis until the Democrats took over the House. And all of a sudden, it's called a crisis. Yes, uh, Patrick has his hand up. The only thing I would disagree with on that statement, I, I think Kevin's right that it, he called it a crisis from the get-go. But, Charlie, you are correct, and I, I know I've, I've said in the past, for all the shit that he'd wanted, he had the House and the Senate, that he, he didn't do any, And it was the same as what Obama had for the first year, year and a half of his presidency, where he shot his mouth off the same way and ended up getting nothing but a hand job because he didn't use it to his and so, He needed 60 in the Senate. Yeah. He never had it. What's that? He needed 60 votes in the Senate and never had it. Yeah, so if they would have passed it in the House, he couldn't have gotten it through the Senate. But, but the thing is, Phil, with, with Trump being a negotiator that he claims that he is, you would have thought with the majority, even at 51, he would have been able to sway some Democrats to his position. He couldn't. Uh, the, now, the Democrats refused to give Trump anything because they didn't want to give him a win. They want him out of the White House, and they're looking to try to cripple his presidency. And by uh, not giving him any wins, that's their way of doing it. They would rather let the American people suffer than give Trump a win. But Looks he like had he chances. Patrick has his hand up, and then you know, Bree. You know, the, the, the thing to remember, though, is the Republicans did the same thing to Obama. They made a pledge that they were going to do jack shit 
and make sure that Obama yeah. it, it, it tips the tat and this is the type of thing that I don't like about our political system is that the Democrats got it shoved up their ass and instead of acting like adults, they're doing it to Trump and it's gonna be it it it's just gonna be a circle. The that's the way it's been for a long time. Okay, okay. That's, br- that's br- exactly right. Somewhere. Before Trump. Trump does not need 60 in the Senate. McConnell killed the filibusters in his first two years. No, for, they did for not the need things, 60. Uh, I believe for what They did said. not, you know, uh, Charlie's right. Yeah. If, if, if Trump wanted to drain the swamp, why didn't he come in here and stop that tit-for-tat bullshit? Uh, don't forget, he's caught no, his control. He could have come in here, it. been the great negotiator, and and stopped all that bullshit. Yeah, well, yeah. for two and a half years, they've been but talking no, about the Russian collusion. But no, he comes in and collusion. starts throwing names they, they, and telling you know, them, it's all it, the Democrats, it's all the Democrats. It is. Why didn't he just become the great negotiator and say, okay, you know, let's stop this bullshit. Let's let's start working together. No. Uh, he and, just and continued it. No, and you made had, it even you worse. had uh, Chef and all and uh, and all of those people that were but talking collusion. That were talking Russian. Uh, he Russian could have collusion. stopped it before. All, all right, that all right, all right. Wait a minute. Before. Before all hey, all that hold, hold on a second, guys. Bree has his hand up. Yes, Bree. Yeah. Thanks, Alex. Um, I I don't know if anyone else has this impression, but the impression that I have is that Trump essentially leads through by media through media so anything like he'll say anything one of his things was we had to build the wall you know so he wants to use that in his next election so anything he can do to make it a crisis actually benefits him so if, if people are dying or if people are calling it cuts that's actually good for him because it then it proves his point and says you know we need to do xyz but i also have this impression and i don't know if anybody else has this i wonder you know when when the manager leaves a store I'm trying to think of a good example, but when the manager leaves a store, how long can the store run before you realize that it's not being run correctly? And what I mean by that is, I don't. Trump does not appoint. There are so many vacancies out there. Um, there are so there are countries without ambassadors, and I, I read something online that uh, he is the the president with the most number of vacancies and the highest turnover in in, in history. And I just get this feeling that he's kind of, he's just holding out and everything is sort of staying together. But at some point we're going to realize we didn't have anybody over he, on he that doesn't, watch now. He doesn't we make, didn't have somebody yeah, doing what, this. What you're right, somebody doing that. What you're right about, Bree, okay. is that he, he has, an, for instance, we don't have a Secretary of Defense right now. We have a temporary Secretary of Defense. And the reason he doesn't go out and say, I want a permanent Secretary of Defense, is he wants the ability to fire any of these guys on a whim, is what it's he all can, about. even if they are permanent. But, you know, he, he has more, as you said, he has more temporary appointments than any president in history, and also uh, he has more people that have left their, their, their jobs in his administration. This is a guy who, quite frankly, when he was the big builder in New York City, I don't think anybody would want to fucking work for because he was probably hell to work for. You wouldn't want to work for this guy. You look at the documentaries, that's exactly what they said. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this People is... People come work for him and then they'd quit or yeah. they'd get fired. And he's running this thing like he runs a business. And I'm exactly. sorry, you can't run it like a business. It's not a business. It's a business unlike any other in America. Okay. It worked the other way. What? It did. Uh, it, know, did it did. Hey, it, like, it, uh, hey, it did like work. It, it, it fell. Work Phil, it did work the other way. Uh, Obama did a... A, a pretty good job. He wasn't the greatest, but he got, did a pretty good job. Clinton did a lot. You know, you got to remember, Obama got us out of a uh, out of out of a bad, deep uh, yeah, financial by, problem by uh, by creating more and more government jobs, not not jobs where people. No, this had nothing to do with jobs. I mean, he kept companies from going under. We were at the edge, at the precipice. Alindra? of. Can I just? Finish. This is a conversation. No, it's not a conversation. Uh, when I'm ta- you can't have a conversation on Skype. 
because Skype won't allow you to have a conversation. One person says something, and then somebody else says something, because the other person can't hear what the other person is saying. And if you haven't learned that by now, you better go read the Skype manual. You know? You know. Uh, so, uh, anyway, where was I? So You were talking about Obama. What I'm saying is, that. is that, it, you know, we had a pretty, well, he inherited a horrible financial situation in this country, and whether you like it or not, he corrected it. He solved it and got us out of that. Uh, if you look back at Clinton, the Clinton era was really financially a great era. And by the way, under Obama, there was greater financial growth in this country than there has been since Trump took office. Okay? Uh, under, uh, under Obama, uh, he took over, there was a, uh, tr uh, Bush got, I thought it was 700 or $750 billion uh, for the bailout. He used half of it uh, uh, under Bush, and then when Obama came in, Obama had the other half of that uh, three quarters of a trillion dollars to uh, to do it, and he used it to bail out. I think uh, you're I think you're wrong about about a lot of this. I, no, I no, no. This, no. This I'm this I'm right no, about. No, no, you're not. I don't think you are. To be well, honest with you. Prove me wrong. Well, uh, I, 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 he I'll, had seven, he had three okay. quarters of a trillion dollars. Look, this, this isn't even germane to what we're talking about tonight. Well, they, it isn't even germane what to what used. we're. It isn't. It, what I'm saying is, he is that, uh, for, for instance, oh, 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 you you still haven't refuted what I said, that under Obama there was greater growth in uh, job growth, financial growth, stock market, everything. Than has taken place than has taken place since Trump took office. Yes, it's kept going up, and he keeps talking about it being higher than it's ever been. But it wouldn't be there if Obama hadn't got it to a point where he could then take it over and take it further. Our economy was in a malaise. No, it when wasn't. Obama was no, president. it wasn't. We had one no. percent growth. Phil, uh, Phil, you know, go back and look at 3.2 percent GDP. Look at the statistics, Phil. That's not I true. I did look at. The That's statistics. not true. There has been less growth. As it was uh, under the Trump administration, than there was in the time in all of Obama's administration. That's because Obama had eight years of a malaise, and Trump is no. Two and a half Obama years was handed a terrible economy, which he managed to to kind of I won't say fix, but he managed to uh, level it out and get things turned around in the other direction to where our economy started becoming a good economy and it started going up and up and up. And there's a whole you know, curve there, and if you look at the curve there and then look at the curve since, yes, it's gone up under Trump, but that momentum was started under Obama. You know, uh, you're having a hard Obama time defending that, Similar Phil. to what FDR did uh, in, uh, no, you know, with no, the WPA no, and no, so forth. No, 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 nothing like that. But you can't sustain that. It was nothing like what uh, uh, no, well, uh, what, FDR what Roosevelt. Was much greater than Obama. No, you didn't know what a, you know. You have no concept of, of FDR and what he did, and the difference between that and what Obama did. I, I've seen history. Yeah, well, you've you know? seen history. Go go watch it again. It was an entirely different way of solving a problem. Obama didn't do it that way. Yeah, he. He created the amount of jobs that he created mm -hmm. were government jobs, mm -hmm. and uh, rather than jobs in the private sector, what Trump is doing is he's creating private sector jobs yeah. and mm -hmm. cutting down uh, the government waste jobs. Yeah. Okay. And so bureaucracy. God, God, God bless him. Yes. Quickly, Bree. We got about five We're, seconds I here. Know. So, Phil, uh, there was a black woman in Chicago last week shoplifting. She was shot and killed. Uh, that, where did they hit her? She, Between the eyes? She, yes. Oh, very shot. Very sensitive, Phil. Hey, hey listen. The theme is good playing. Shot. Hear that? That's that's the theme. Hey, Bree, thank you so much. He was the first one up tonight. Or second one up, Ty. Uh, uh, Jeff, thank you so never, much. Oh. Charlie was the she first one up always. tonight. Uh, and and uh, Patrick, uh, thank you so much for joining us this evening. It's always great when you're here. Phil, thank you. I had to call you to get you on the show tonight. Certain something I'm regretting right now, but you know. And uh, uh, Kevin, always a pleasure having you here. Uh, what I want everybody to do is to give a big wave goodbye, and I'll wave back, and uh, we'll uh, we'll call it a you know a, a wrap. 
you know, that's it. That's our uh, that's our uh, 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 citizen panel for tonight. Good, th- uh, and thanks, Jeff. Did, Je- did I thank Jeff? I, I think I thank, thank Jeff, yeah. Anyway, Jeff, thank you as well. Uh, um, and let me just uh, close down the... Uh, uh, the Skype here. So the next guy is Jack Bishop can use it for the intersection. I'll be back again tomorrow night right after Damian Chaplin has the exchange on at 9.30 Eastern Daylight Time. I'll be here at 10 Eastern Daylight Time, same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Oh, that's not what we wanted. What we wanted was this. There we go.